Hey, this is Jason with Client Success at Arroyo. We're going to be talking today about growth behavior, crop uniformity, and understanding why high sensor density can really help understand what's going on with your crops. When we look at traditional population statistics, it's really important to understand variation factors in clone plant populations. So we'll talk a little bit today about population densities, understanding normalized curves, and really how you can apply this for most effective crop steering. So let's talk about population statistics. When we think about variation factors uh, in cloned plant populations, we can easily attribute these with what's called a normalized distribution. In order to build a normalized distribution, we need to get an understanding of sample sizes and how they relate to the population size. We'll finalize the slideshow by talking about how we can apply this statistical analysis to crop steering. Let's first take a look at these variation factors. So when we think about variation factors that affect the crop, environment kind of comes to the top of the mind. In this case, we've got a picture of a fairly typical 40 by 40 room. This is a indoor cultivation facility in which we've taken 18 continuous readings across the room in different locations to build a gradient of the temperature. In the bottom left, we'll see that the temperatures floated around 82 degrees and up in the top right, it's almost 10 degrees cooler. This can directly affect the variation or uniformity across a cultivar in this room. Another variation factor, one that Arroyo does a great job at taking a look at, is irrigation. In this picture, we're displaying two emitters in a pot. You can see the pot around the outside. We can see the plant growing in the middle. And then the two emitters just by the black spots to the left and the right. If we look closely, we'll notice that the black spot on the right is much smaller. This is due to a clogged emitter. So that substrate is cooling off as that irrigation is being pumped into the substrate. And we can directly understand that the one on the right side is irrigating less. It's most likely clogged. This could be a significant factor in determining your crop uniformity. So irrigation systems that are solid, reliable, are a great way to help increase your crop uniformity. Other variation factors while cultivating uh, light uniformity, that's obviously going to be a big one. Uh, light being the catalyst for photosynthesis. As we increase our light uniformity, we can expect a much more uniform crop. Cloning consistency also plays a huge factor in crop uniformity. When we have good cloning processes, we take healthy sized clones and are very consistent through processing those clones, you're more likely to have a good uniformity. Defoliation consistency, processing consistency, and localized pressure pressures can also cause variations in the crop uniformity. The last variation factor that we're going to talk about here is uh, mixed cultivar harvest groups. So running more than one strain uh, at the same time for the same duration, trading them with the same irrigation. Obviously, this variation factor can contribute significantly to plants growing to their optimum and some strains not growing to their optimum. So this photo is a, one of my favorites. It's showing all the different colors as certain strains are ripening up faster different sizes of the plants, and really a great snapshot of how different cultivars need to be grouped or monocropped for their best performance. Let's talk about sample size. So a sample size is how many parts of a population that are being considered for statistical analysis. In this case, we have an example Arroyo install. This room's a thousand square foot. Each of the large boxes is representing a bench, each of the small boxes is representing a plant, and each of the green boxes is representing a plant being sensed. So we've got 750 plants in here, that's the population size. The number of sensors in the room is 10. Even at that one per 100 square foot sensor density, we're only analyzing 1.3% of the population. The larger that sample size, the better that we can attribute plant growth and the better snapshot that we have of crop uniformity across the room. 
So let's analyze these with a graph. When we look at uniformity, we want to have more plants that are similarly behaving. Anytime we're working on a biological product, there's going to be a distribution. This is a normalized distribution curve, and it's going to attribute any large population of biological product. On the bottom right, we've got a curve that's showing the least crop uniformity. So it's got a, a wide standard of deviation. The middle chart is showing a slightly more uniform crop. And then that final solid line is indicating crop that has a high uniformity and a very small standard of deviation. So those plants are weighing the same, have similar quality, and there's not a big difference across the room. Why it's important to achieve that uniformity is because it makes it much easier to crop steer, makes your cultivation processes more predictable, makes your yield totals more projectable. So in this case, we've got a dotted line here at the expected value or average plant weight. In this case, we're gonna call the black line the control crop performance. And after we apply some crop steering for deliberately timed and applied vegetative and generative cues, we can steer this crop. This green chart is going to show an effective steering where we have increased the yield or quality on that product by shifting the expected value of the entire population of plant. Things get a little bit more complicated when mixed cultivars are run in a room. So anytime that more than one strain is on the same irrigation, same environment, same harvesting timeline, then those plants may or may not be running to the optimum, depending on how closely they grow to the plants, the other strain type in that room. So in this case, the range is set by the growth preferences of those plants, and that can be a variation factor. So how do we steer mixed cultivar crops? Well, one of the most important things that can be done is documenting how each cultivar grows. So did that plant grow very well in respect to that environment irrigation schedule? And how did the other plants grow? If there is room changes, did the optimization of each plant change? Did it get better? Did it get worse? So documenting that in harvest groups, getting an understanding of what your yields were for every cycle is very important for optimizing plant growth of different types. If you must mix crops and have multiple strains in a room, then you can use that documentation to try and group similar growing plants together. What that's gonna do is allow you to apply crop steering techniques that can improve both cultivars or all three cultivars that are in a room. So in this case, we've got dotted lines down here representing those three populations of strains that we have growing in this theoretical harvest group. And we're gonna apply a crop steering technique and see that we were able to increase the production of our blue strain and increase the production of our red strain. In this case, we know that we would wanna apply that crop steering or limit that room for blue and red type strains. In this case, sometimes it's best to document all of your strains, how they operate, and make room choices based on the growth preferences of each strain. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I hope it helps.